Hello everybody, welcome to the Mighty Glue Stick, you're speaking with AJ, and today we're going to be covering the Bugbear. The Bugbear is one of the Goblinoids, and it's in the Goblin series, uh, and it's one of my favourites, for sure. They are in the 5th edition uh, version of the game, and in the modern folklore of Bugbears in the D&D world, they are a creation that stems from the Hobgoblin uh, race. So Goblins and Bugbears are both... Uh, bred from hobgoblin stock um, and it's in fact goblins that are a subset of hobgoblins and not the other way around bugbears are bred to be essentially commandos shock troops um, very stealthy but deadly um, murderous very large and strong um, survivalists and they are used to much effect by hobgoblins to soften up forces or to infiltrate into an area uh, and even kill specific targets. In that they are much larger, um, and they are only the only goblinoid that has got uh, body fur, um, and they've got longer claws and fangs than other goblins. Um, they are called bugbears because of their appearance, and that they um, they have longer claws and things, and they sort of walk with a hobbled, um, hunched over, stooped sort of posture. But they are. Um, usually in excess of seven feet tall uh, they can range up to seven foot six and they can weigh up to 400 pounds so they're extremely large compared to other um, goblinoids and uh, they know it they also have a very prodigious appetite and they eat almost exclusively meat and uh, so they're fairly obsessed with hunting all the time and hunting forms the large part of their culture such as it is they are survivalists first and foremost and will t basically make use of any shelter they can find if they need it but otherwise they're equally at home sleeping out in the wilds and are used to making their own, sh their own shelter wherever they find it uh, they're the bear grills of the of the goblin kind and uh, they're extremely hardy not only that but they're also naturally extremely stealthy uh, left to their own devices or when they're on the hunt they make almost no noise when they're moving around um, and much like the other goblins they have things in common with other goblin kind but things that they also do exceedingly well L much like every other goblin they have a dark vision out to 60 feet however they have much larger ears and uh, their eyes are such that they are not bothered by sunlight, unlike other goblinoids. Um, it doesn't bother them at all. They they work equally well in bright sunlight or pitch darkness, and their senses are extremely sharp. Their sense of hearing is also extremely sharp, and they, you can tell by uh, looking at various depictions of uh, the bugbears that their ears uh, ha have a prominence in what they consider to be attractive in their culture. So uh, they find bugbears with large noses and ears to be fairly attractive their noses are fairly distinctive too they are described as bear like um, but it's mainly because they're wide and flat and usually a bit moist um, but one of the interesting things about bugbears is that their noses much like um, other dominant sort of goblins tend to, to range around a bluish sort of a pigment um, this is a kind of like a silverback gorilla the more large and dominant and mature a hobgoblin male is the, the more blue his nose will be um, they also have a, a tender have a bluish tinge to their tongue and the gums inside their mouth their eyes are a greenish white with red pupils typically their pelts range from all kinds of browns and uh, all the all the sort of colors that bears have uh, and they can even have, there's, there's been reports of some bugbears in uh, remote locations which have blue fur. Um, but in earlier editions of the game, such as uh, the, there's a supplement for the Underdark, there's chameleon bugbears, there's also reptilian bugbears as well. So they tend to vary quite a bit in their, um, their appearance. And they have over the years, the original depiction of bugbears in the game were they didn't have a lot of fur on their faces and things like that but over time they've gotten sort of more furry um, and they've gotten a more flat top to their head and their ears have become far more prominent their eyes have become smaller um, and they they have a variant amount of fangs either a sort of a jutting lower jaw fang or um, a more evenly distributed fangs throughout their mouth but they've definitely got longer nastier teeth than other goblin kind and much longer claws um, which are black. Their 
uh, pelt underneath their fur usually is a sort of a yellowish tone, um, but can go all the way to a sort of a brick orange colored. Um, but they, uh, you can have pitch black bugbears or black and white sort of panda pattern bugbears if you want. Um, they don't tend to have patterns in their fur uh, like um, knolls and things do. Um, they don't have any sort of tiger stripes or anything like that. But yeah, they, they do have a sort of a shaggy rangy appearance and can look kind of Chewbacca like. A little bit wooky, um, if you if you will. So they're they are very much at home in the wild and uh, in dungeon environments. They tend to be much larger than other goblins, and they take over other goblin societies. Um, they take a position of dominance in goblin kind uh, whenever they feel like it. But left to their own devices, they will form up into squads, um, like small hunting clans. Um, that they they feel comfortable with each individual um, in that in that group, and they take strength in numbers. Because unlike other goblin kind, uh, because of their size and their predominant um, hunting for meat all the time, they tend to run into um, they compete for resources that other giant humanoids like giants um, and etins and things like that fight for so um, and cyclops and things like that so they not only have to deal with the small humanoids they have to deal with the large humanoids as well and because strength in numbers um, works uh, they tend to naturally form into gangs and this also allows them to um, cohabitate quite well in urban environments or um, to make forays into urban environments where they have to deal with the fact that uh, humans and elves and things like that typically cohabitate in large groups that work very cohesively together. Bugbears individually are usually quite stupid, um, but this is mainly a cultural thing. Biologically, they are very capable of learning. And don't be surprised if you run across a very intelligent uh, bugbear and it's quite possible to play a player character bugbear that is just as capable of a human um, they tend to be rogues or perhaps barbarians left to their own devices but with a complete training and a careful hand and uh, a very firm um, uh, raising from birth to avoid their more animal tendencies they can learn magic and uh, they can learn to be rangers any sort of um, fighter they can be gladiators um, and they can find ways of getting gainful employ and avoiding their um, their base nature their base nature is murderous they are murderers they gain pleasure from killing hunting and things like that so um, they're carnivorous and they survive primarily by hunting and will eat anything that they kill, including sentient beings and goblinoids. Uh, so any intruder in their area is considered a, v a valuable source of food and sport. So they will hunt anyone who comes in uninvited into the area if they feel so inclined. Uh, they really bother to negotiate with anyone. If they're hunting you, they have no interest in conversing with you. Um, but they are cruel and have a fondness for glittery and shiny objects, weapons and armor. They like to purloin um, things from their prey. So they will hunt down people just because they have a nice sword or pole arm or some such thing. They do favor large weapons and those that are more religiously inclined will favor morning stars because that is the uh, the chosen weapon of the, uh, the bugbear gods. They worship... Um, uh, so their pantheon is led by Hrugek, uh, and there's also Grankul and Skigaret, and the, they've become um, archons of Bane, so they've become lesser um, deities since the reordering of the gods. But Hrugek still lives in Archon, and uh, Gruk, Grak, uh, Grakul and Skigaret, uh, I think they still live in the Abyss, as far as I know. Um, yeah. Oh, Hrugek has a, he used to have a cave, cave in Pandemonium, um, but now he lives in Archon with, uh, Archeron with Bane. And essentially, most of Goblin society, particularly Hobgoblin society, um, is oriented around them taking their place in the armies of Archeron and, uh, perhaps even the armies of Hades, Hades or the Nine Hells. Um, so for them, that's their afterlife. They don't. They don't have any aspirations to go into a celestial realm. That's where weaker races go. They go to somewhere that they can fight and kill and murder for their gods. 
Uh, Hrugek is fond of taking the heads of his victims, and so are bugbears. Bugbears like to make sport uh, decorations of heads, and uh, they favour drinking out of prepared vessels of skulls and things like that, almost exclusively. They are not very um, keen on smelting and blacksmithing and things like that themselves. Uh, they're just basically too lazy. Um, much like most other carnivores, they like to, to lie around and range around. Um, when they're well fed, they like to rest and basically do nothing. Uh, they will make sport out of uh, torturing and killing things. Uh, but other than that, they, they really just converse quietly amongst themselves. So they uh, their spoken language is... Uh, uh, um, the kobold, uh, sorry, the uh, the goblin tongue is Guglak, and it's there's not very many examples of it um, written down anywhere. It's a foul-sounding mix of grunts, snarls, gestures, and such um, that usually sounds quite unintelligent uh, because for goblinoids, curt and to the point speech is considered to be straightforward. Anything that is um, has a an element of a jest or a trick is seen as rude. So barking orders and saying something very directly, like this chair, sit in it, is that's polite by Goblin Society's standards. And the same goes with bugbears. They don't like anybody who speaks flowerily or eloquently because it's there's all sorts of room for trickery and subterfuge in there, and they don't like it. So it's actually best to talk to goblins very directly because they will speak to you that way themselves. And they're not being rude when they're doing that. They're just speaking directly uh, and, and it's basically using open language, so to speak. So, yeah. Uh, so they've got very good hearing and they're very strong. The traits of uh, bugbears that you need to watch out for is they, uh, they prefer to ambush. And they are very good at making sneak attacks. If they have um, surprise on you when they attack you, they will get a bonus to the damage that they do to you. So, yeah. Um, so that's basically, it does an extra um, 7 points or 2d6 damage from the attack. Also, they are so prodigiously strong and put so much of their body into each blow that they make that they have a attribute called brute strength. So a melee weapon that they wield does an extra dice of damage, an extra die of damage. So if they use a 1d8 weapon, it now becomes a 2d8 weapon. And if they've gotten a surprise attack on you, it's 2d8 plus 2d6. So it can quickly mount up to being a devastating whack that could clean take your head off in one blow. In fact, that's what they aim to do. They don't mess around in combat. They will overwhelm you with their size. They will gang up on you and they will beat you to death. Um, if they have orders to take somebody hostage, they will basically bludgeon you to death, uh, bludgeon you into submission using um, non-lethal blows. But they concentrate all of their attacks on targets and they use their size and strength to their advantage. They will throw victims. They will shoulder barge them. They'll trip them up and smash them when they're down. They'll use every, every dirty tactic they can think of. They'll throw sand in your eyes. Uh, they will duck behind objects to get out of the way of um, ranged attackers or um, magic users. They'll draw melee fighters in um, to cover and then basically go one-on-one -on -one and try and beat them down, or they will gang up on that person and uh, smash them to pieces. So they are quite clever and strategic fighters. Uh, they don't run blindly into combat. They prefer not to. They prefer to fight from cover. They prefer to fight in an environment where they've got the advantage of their sharp senses. So anywhere where um, it's either blinding light or obscuring darkness is preferred. And uh, despite their size, they're quite stealthy and um, can make their way around quite well. Also, unlike other goblin kind, if you look at the various entries, um, the sort of tougher uh, bugbears have got another trait, which allows them to resist um, basically falling prey to effects which would uh, dampen their will or, or subvert it. Um, so that's quite a useful trait. I'll just turn to the page in the monster menu and I've neglected to have it open as I was talking since I know these guys so well. 
Yeah. So they do fight um, for forces of evil. Um, they do respect leaders and things who can provide them with whatever they need. Because um, although they do love hunting, they also love getting things served up to them on a silver platter. They like being the dominant um, goblin kind. They like being larger and stronger than other, everything else. And uh, yeah, with good reason. So, where are these guys? Yeah, but given the opportunity, they will um, lord it over goblin kind and... Uh, particularly when they take over the chieftain position i mean if they if a, if a bugbear shows up uh, amongst the tribe of goblins they, they're essentially this chief is just going to make himself scarce for a few weeks until the bugbear has run through all of their resources food has become scarce he's gotten sick and tired of the the, um, the goblins screeching at him killed a few of them um, and moved on so they they basically just wander in and take over when they need to or feel feel that they they want to um oh there we are so page 33 <laughs> i went straight past it um yeah so the the strongest um, bugbear bosses the chiefs of their own little murder bands because they don't have big tribes um has a trait called the heart of hrugek and it has advantage on all saving throws against being charmed frightened paralyzed poisoned stunned or put to sleep so essentially their metabolism is such that they just they'll just power straight through it they they're very single-minded um and y it's very hard to negotiate with them they they have a purpose um so yeah that's what they like to do um they will purloin any sort of weapon or armor that they need um because they are furred they don't tend to get very cold they can survive in most environments so they don't wear a lot of stuff to sort of um keep themselves warm but they will strap on um, plates and leather and things like that and they favor spikes and things like that that they can use in hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, they like combat and like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with things and uh, they'll fight just for the sheer reason of fighting um, they'll a friendly jostle amongst a, a, a few bugbears that know each other well um, would look fairly deadly to outsiders and they'll inflict fairly significant wounds on each other otherwise you know it's not worth it they're not fighting for their to their full potential um, because they're also sizing each other up because if push comes to shove and it's a it's a crisis situation and game is scarce they will turn on each other um, because their hunger cannot be denied they must maintain their strength that that is the one trait that they have above all other goblins so yeah uh, they also like throwing javelins and uh, as i say using morning stars um, but they will throw rocks if they need to um, yeah they're fond to survival by raiding and uh, hunting, and they do like um, essentially murdering um, human settlers who are on the outskirts of human society. Um, but they'll take advantage of either, any other humanoid that they can see as weaker than themselves. So any opportunity to uh, inflict maximum damage, they will. Also, um, they're extremely cruel and use terror um, quite a lot and quite effectively. So for them, they'll wound... Uh, severely wound a member of the party um, like we're talking chop a hand off or something that's that's not going to heal up with a short rest um, and then that will cause the the entire party to slow down or, or start heading back to civilization to to repair that person um, and it'll essentially lead them straight into some sort of ambush or something like that where they can take a good advantage and um, they will take a leg at a time if they need to um, and slowly munch their way through a, um, an adventuring group. Um, or they will take the children of a farmstead or a homestead and use the tortured cries of children to lure out um, the male defenders of the, that settlement and kill them and then move in to kill everyone else and their livestock. Um, so that's fairly typical hunting behavior for them. It makes no difference to them whatsoever whether somebody is... Um, intelligent or not they're just meat to a to a bugbear that's their base nature um, but they can be trained out of that and they can live in society so there are great contradictions um, and you never really know what you're going to run into if you encounter a lone bugbear um, whether they're just going to outright kill you um, or they're going to talk to you first never can tell 
Um, good bet is to talk to them in common. If they understand you, um, then they may have had encounters with others where they've learned common um, and may have curbed their nature somewhat. But you never know. They uh, mature quickly. Um, their birth rate is relatively low compared to other goblinoids um, for whatever reason. Uh, it may just be that they um, they don't tend to uh, live very long. They they mature. Um, they're basically adults by the age of 11 uh, and they can live for up to 75 years but they will typically die somewhere around their 20s um, or a 40 year old bugbear is doing pretty pretty well and is probably um, fairly dominant in its area but they pick up um, fairly severe injuries and things and they don't have a lot of healing arts so they get prodigious scars and physical disfigurements as they go through life um, so it'll be fairly typical to see them with quite vicious looking claw wounds and things like that when they've taken on cave bears and giant sloths and reptiles and lizard folk and all manner of adventurers so they would have been uh, had ears hacked in half with uh, broadswords or had daggers sink into a knee and be walking around with quite a hobble or strapped it to get strapped it up somewhat um, and if they've lost a limb they will have replaced it with some sort of weapon um, a spike or something like that on the end of a stub so yeah but otherwise, yeah, they do maintain their weapons, but um, they'll grab the next of nearest available thing. They, they don't have sentiment per se, so um, nothing's really... If they find a better weapon, they'll throw away whatever they have. They'll just drop it on the spot and grab the better one. Um, and they like to maintain a fairly light and mobile um, lifestyle. So the idea of hunkering down in a lair is not appealing to them. So that's why they don't generally rule it over um, all goblin tribes, because they don't like hanging out for any length of time in one place. Um, it's, it's instinctual for them. They're large predators. They need to maintain a large area that they hunt. So they are constantly on the prowl, um, and they're fairly unpredictable in that regard. They don't have any larger society where um, they observe any sort of cohesive... Um, ceremonial nature or anything like that um, if any groups of them get together um, and one of them is more religious than the other they may make up ceremonies to hrugek um, on the spot and enforce them viciously so they can have all sorts of weird things that they do but yeah generally speaking uh, bugbears are, are good to encounter particularly if you're encountering them as a group in a city environment or something like that where they are they have been hired um, as muscle and they do that particularly well. So they make really good bounces and things like that because there's, there's no arguing with them. There's no swaying them. You can't convince them to get out of the way. They'll have a job to do. They know that they've got a steady meal um, promised to them. They've got access to weapons and things like that. They've got shelter when they need it. But they can pick up and leave whenever they want to. That is the nature of a bugbear. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'll be back with uh, the next one in this series would be Hobgoblins. Yeah. Um, I'm quite enjoying it. And uh, I'll have another video for you again quite soon. Brain